Spanish. There we go. Okay. Grandma goes to the South Pacific, a voyage of appreciation. Whoops. Just doing a big time. Climate determined the workload. Tihoni and Tehotu gave constant weather updates. To Grandma, everything felt the same. But because the islanders are so in sync with their environment, they are able to read the sky, clouds, wind, and water. They can tell you all the subtle changes. Teotu visited the weather station to confirm what he felt was coming. Sure enough, a storm, the remnant of a Samoan typhoon, was heading their way. Teotu decided they should leave for Kamaka Island before it hit. They needed to cross eight miles of open ocean and a small boat in order to get to Kamaka. You cannot even begin to imagine how far this is. Grandma can't swim. There are no life jackets. And a storm is on its way. Soon. Very soon. Not good. Grandma wants this adventure. But is it too much for this city girl? Once Tehotu, Moyata, and Aunt Mari, Harrietta, Jade, and Grandma were in the boat. She had no other option but to hang on and pray. I'm going to skip forward a little bit. Perfection in Paradise. After their visit to the Pearl Farm, they dropped off Moyate at an atoll. She began looking for sea urchins, black spiky things. Grandma and the others went to the coral reef, searching for the seven-finger conch. Raruna started swimming. Three sharks joined her. Grandma was a little nervous about that and didn't know if Raruna was aware of them. Tehotu said it was okay. That is, until one hungry shark ate its feeder fish. Tehotu quickly yanked on the line for her to get back into the boat. They headed back to where Moyata was. She had cleaned the seafood. This was lunch, straight from the ocean with a squeeze of lime on top. They continued on their afternoon trek. The four of them waded through waist-high water to a little sandbar. The islanders call these islets, or spits of land, a motu. This one was only the size of a large reef shark. Grandma slowly turned a full 360 degrees, and all she saw was blue. Incredible shades of blue. So many hues of blue. She tried to think of all of them. Ice blue, royal blue, midnight blue, turquoise, sky blue, dark blue, cobalt blue, steel blue, teal, aqua. And then she realized even Crayola crayons doesn't have this many versions of blue in their section of crayons. Across the entire horizon, the baby blue sky melted into the azure blue of the ocean. In that full circle turn, Grandma saw nothing. No land, no people, not a soul anywhere. No human sounds, no airplanes, nothing. Absolute quiet. Intellectually, Grandma knew the Pacific Ocean was huge, enormous, gigantic, immense, massive. But her mind could not even begin to grasp the enormity until she was standing in the middle of it on a speck of land and could see absolutely nothing but blue. Grandma felt insignificant, like they were the only people on the planet at the ends of the earth. She couldn't help but reflect what brought her here. Out here, Grandma had no choice but to ponder the meaning of life and God as she looked around. Later, they headed home, traveling around many of the small islands. What a perfect day in paradise. Well worth the wait of all those days. Okay.